Hi there, this is Focus on GRA and I am Carlita Edwards. On this week's edition, you will learn about our Customs Officer Training Program. We will also share with you how an individual can obtain a bet and shop license. Focus on GRA starts now. Recently, the Guyana Revenue Authority conducted a training program for customs officers. This program is critical for enhancing employees' performance since it will contribute to improving employees' skills and knowledge of their job and also help in building their confidence. To tell us more about this customs training program, here is Fabian Clouds. With a mandate to administer the country's tax, trade and border laws and regulations, as well as regulate the oil and gas sector for tax purposes, the Ghana Revenue Authority's capacity building for customs officers remains a priority. In this respect, the Authority's signature customs officer training program has been updated and amended to make sure that the training modules delivered corresponds with the functional knowledge necessary for effective tax administration. We are doing our part. We are building the capacity. You would have seen um, increased content. Some of the things that we were never have thought before, for example, things like oil and gas and so on. You are now introduced to that at the very beginning stage, at the beginning of your career. The Customs Officer Training Program for this year, 2022, a collaborative effort of Customs and the GRA's Human Resource Management Division commenced on July 5 and concluded on September 9. The program attracted a total of 89 officers from Customs, 45 of whom were successful. Some of the top achievers shared their experience. For me, failure is never an option. It was one of my goals to have this opportunity to be a part of the program and since I was given this opportunity, it was a privilege to sit this exam. I was determined, dedicated to do my best. I had to multitask my day-to-day -day duties and responsibilities at the work while focusing on my online Zoom classes that we had every day. For me, knowledge is power. With the experience and knowledge I've gained throughout this program, it has shaped me into becoming a well-rounded officer. As an officer, I am more confident in the way I address customs related matters. The knowledge I gained from this program has also equipped me to apply myself better in my day-to-day -day duties and responsibilities at work. I am able to work, I am able to get work done in a more effective and efficient manner. As a result, this would enhance the productivity in, Gain in the Guyana Revenue Authority. Currently attached to the wharves and boathouse, I served in the capacity of clerk too at the John Finance Wharf and the Amara Shipping Company Limited, where I was mandated to monitor the operations of cargo vessels plying the international trade and facilitating the clearance of commercial and personal cargoes at these transit sheds. I can confidently say the program was very rewarding as it furnished me with the formal technical competencies in executing my role as a proper of customs officer to promote Guyana's trade and border laws through the systematic perusal of international trade documents to mitigate falsified customs declarations.
conducting risk-based profiling of passengers, baggage, and cargo to prevent illicit trade and contributing to the overall faster clearance time for taxpayers. Additionally, with the emergence of the oil and gas sector, much needed training was provided to efficiently monitor the operations of the industry to safeguard the oil revenue. This year's Customs Officer 1 training program encompassed functions in relation to reporting of vessels and aircraft, vessel search or rummaging, risk assessment, risk management, post-clearance audits, and an introduction to oil and gas. I was nominated for the Customs Officer 1 training in 2022 after a selection procedure in order to expand my skill set and understanding of Customs Law Chapter 80201, regulations and SOPs for every department surrounding customs functions and activities. I dedicated all of my time and effort into completing this course, and I was successful in doing so. During the course, I was exposed to topics I was ignorant of to carry out my responsibilities as a customs officer, one, I intend to use the knowledge gained on a daily basis to better serve the members of the public while being effective and efficient. On a personal level, the program taught me to be disciplined. It also helped me to improve my communication skills, which is needed when working together as a team. In terms of work, this program has widened my knowledge of different areas and departments in customs. And now if I am transferred to another unit in customs, I have the required knowledge to function effectively. After completing this program, I have gained a clearer comprehension of the functions and rules of customs, as well as my duties as a custom officer on a technical basis. Moving forward, I will use this knowledge gained to perform my duties to the best of my abilities. Studies in international customs organizations, such as the World Customs Organization and the World Trade Organization were also facilitated, along with documentation relating to financing of international trade, goods in transit and transshipment, coasting trade, tariff structure, classification, valuation, and rules of origin. I want to commend the HR department, and perhaps this is one of the first time um, in, in recent time that we've been able to work together in a way that would have identified um, training in, in a, with a degree of synergy, with, with, a, with a sort of pillarized approach of recognizing that to move you forward, to encourage that level of specialization that is required, um, especially with the changing external environment, requires the foundation that we were able to Important to you Along with collecting customs duty and taxes and clearing cargo at the border, customs must also support Guyana's commitment to international, regional and bilateral trade agreements, as well as adherence to the terms of the existing petroleum sharing agreement with oil exploration companies. Considering that Guyana has changed and is on the point of development, and point of development where the way we do business can no longer suffice. The way we would have done it in the past, we needed to evolve and to evolve very quickly to meet local and international needs and demands. In particular with the development of oil, the spin-off sectors, and the volume of persons and goods, sorry, the volume of goods and the number of persons that will be traversing Guyana's borders. It makes the role of customs so much more difficult. I don't need to point out the mandate again. The mandate is not only revenues. Yes, we are a revenue agency, but it's about trade, compliance with the border laws, facilitation of trade, and enhancing an environment of cooperation. Tasked with the responsibility of regulating the country's oil and gas sector for customs and audit purposes, the GRA has built adequate capacity. Staff in its customs petroleum units and petroleum revenue departments have benefited from training in areas such as basic offshore safety induction and emergency training, crude lifting and measurements, S&P global plans, case advice, boarding officers documentation 
and oil and gas risk management. An important aspect of operating any business is ensuring that it is properly licensed. Let's learn about what is a betting shop license and the documents that an individual needs to submit in order to obtain this license. The Guyana Revenue Authority has observed that numerous individuals are operating their business without the requisite license. While there are some individuals that are not aware that they are required by law to obtain a license when operating their business, there are others who choose to operate their business without a license. This practice has contributed to the loss of revenue. In view of this, the Guyana Revenue Authority has been taking steps to address this issue by providing the general public with vital information to ensure that they are aware of their tax obligations. This will enable persons to become more compliant. Recently, the GRA has been receiving numerous queries as to whether an individual is required to obtain a license to operate a betting shop. The Tax Act, Chapter 8001, makes it clear that an individual who has a premises which is used to conduct betting transactions must obtain a betting license from the Guyana Revenue Authority. Here, the law is mandating all individuals to obtain their license once they are involved in such business operations. A betting transaction includes the receipt or negotiation of bets, the sale or distribution in any manner of chances in lotteries, the collection or payments of money for or winnings on bets or any such chances and any transactions in the course of the management of lotteries. Let's now examine what is a betting shop license. To simplify this for us is Ms. Yanola Ned. A betting shop is any premises where the activity of betting is carried on, which may include sports betting, horse racing, slot machine, etc. It must be noted that the GRA only license the premises. The approval and monitoring for the activity of betting is done by the gaming authority. We wish to remind the public that the GRA values all of its taxpayers and will continue to serve them with efficiency. In view of this, we are encouraging individuals who are applying for the betting shop license to ensure that they have all the necessary documents before visiting the GRA. This will enable us to provide a license in the shortest possible time. Ms. Ned highlights the documents that must be submitted. Updated business registration or Companies Act or Articles of Incorporation, a valid form of identification, your passport or national ID or your plastic car driver's license, title or transport for the premises or an affidavit of consent if the individual or company is not the owner of the property. If the property is being rented, a tenancy agreement. An approved plan and letter for the premises, which must be stamped and signed by the Central Housing and Planning Authority and the Guyana Fire Service. Fire certificate from the Guyana Fire Service, your sanitary certificate from the NDC or Mayor and City Council, a police clearance for the owner or owners. The cost for the betting shop license is $2,500,000. This payment can be made at the GRA's head office or any other branch office located countrywide. We are encouraging individuals to utilize our alternative payment options, which include making payments through MMG, Bill Express, or through any of the following banking institutions, Republic Bank, GBTI, or Demerara Bank. Individuals who obtain this license are reminded that the license is valid for one calendar year, commencing January 1 and ending December 31 in the year it is issued. This means that the individual will need to renew the license for each year that they are in business. 
The Guyana Revenue Authority takes this opportunity to encourage business operators to ensure that they obtain the requisite license when operating their business. Before I go, let me remind individuals who need more information to visit our website www.gra.gov.gy. You can also send us an email at grapublicrelations at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. See you again on our next edition of Focus on GRA.